Hello and happy Sabbath family and friends. Thank you for joining your Chandler Community Fellowship family for worship this morning. I just want you to know I've been praying for you this week and I've even had the opportunity not to just pray with some of you um, and pray for you this week, but I've had the opportunity over the last couple of weeks to visit some of you and um, it has truly been a joy for me. And so I don't want to delay, I want to get right into our service. Let's start off with a word of prayer and we will just continue on in our service. Amen. Amen. Loving Lord, we thank you for everyone gathered here, Lord. We thank you that you know each of us by name and you've caused us to walk with you, Lord. As we surrender ourselves to you, we ask that you will empty us of ourselves and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Inspire our hearts today, Lord. Inspire our hearts with your word, your wisdom, and your way, Lord. These and all things we humbly ask, believe, and claim in the worthy name of Jesus. And it is so. Amen. Our scripture reading comes today from the... Uh, book of 1 Corinthians. So it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 13 and it's basically the love chapter. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but do not have love, I've become a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Love does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak as a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I have been fully known. But now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Family, the love chapter. 1 Corinthians 13 is love up close and personal and in action. Paul leaves no stone unturned as to what love is and what it really looks like. Um, but he had to because the backstory in Corinthians chapter 12, Paul gave strong evidence as he pointed out in the Corinthians lack of love in the utilization of spiritual gifts. Isn't that something? Taking the gifts God gave them to build, love, and minister to the needs of the body of Christ, and we, I mean, they repurposed it to build themselves up. Doesn't that sound familiar? The Bible talks about four kinds of love. I'll say that again. The Bible talks about four types of love. Agape, which is a spiritual, selfless love, uh, storage, 
uh, which is family love, affection as of parents for children, and you know, just the familial um, relationship love. Philia, uh, friendship or brotherly love or mental love, as some say, and eros, the physical, sensual, intimate love. Um, love, it, it seems strange that such a small word is so incredibly powerful. Throughout history, people have written poetry and songs about love, wanting love, finding love, experiencing the exhilaration as, as well as disappointment and ultimately losing love. We, we look for love in, in our home, in our church, in our community, in our workplace. Everywhere we exist, family, we seek love in some way, shape, or form. Why? Because we're hardwired for connection. When, when we think about creation week, you know, when, when on the fifth day when God spoke uh, the animal kingdom into existence and gave them mates and, and the ability to, to reproduce, um, but when God was ready to make man, in Genesis 1 and 26, God said, let us make man in, in our image after our likeness to rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. You know, all the things that they had created. And the word goes on to say in Genesis 2 and 7, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or the spirit of life and man became a living being. The original Hebrew words for living being are speaking spirit. So we were created to be like God in his image, in his likeness, and the ability to speak and create by the utilization of words and hands. But as many times as I've read this, I had to pause. I'm, I'm so glad God was not alone. He had someone to share that incredible moment with. Let us make man in our image. The story continues with Adam being the, you know, given the command of regarding the tree of life and tree of knowledge of good and evil, all the do's and don'ts in the garden. And afterwards, God brought the animals into Adam so he could name them. And whatever he called them, that was their name. And Adam had the opportunity to, to look around and see that all the animals had a suitable mate for them. Adam needed to see and feel that something was missing. Everyone had someone but him. God said it was not good for man to be alone and said, I will make a, help, a helper suitable for him. So he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and, and he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. Can you imagine when Adam fell asleep when God caused that deep sleep to fall upon him? I can only imagine what he was dreaming of, but no matter what it was, it could not compare to what he was going to wake up to, the gift that God was going to present to him. And when Adam saw her, he said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. This is why man leaves his mother and father and clings to his wife and they become one flesh. You know, you can't really appreciate someone or something unless you've gone without. Adam went to sleep alone, family. He went to sleep alone and woke up with evidence of God's love. Someone made just for him. Shepherd interacting with Shepherd as they watched Adam and Eve see each other for the first time and witness their connection. Wow, how amazing that must have been. God's creation of mankind were 
were plans and words and actions motivated by pure, unconditional, selfless love. Mm. But now that we've found love, what are we going to do with it? If we're honest, love no matter what kind, whether it be a agape, storge, a philia, or eros, we think of how love will benefit us oftentimes. That's not to say that we look, don't look forward to showing love and, and, and being there for our loved ones. But if we're honest, we look forward to love's benefits. And there are many, all of love's benefits. We think about how we don't have to be alone anymore. We have someone to, to do life with them, someone to share our hopes, our dreams, our fears, and someone to comfort us in, in challenging times. Why? Because we are hardwired for connection. Survival is greater where there is unity, community. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 through 12 talks about the advantages of companionship. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other can succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. But now that we've found love, what are we going to do with it? Because sometimes we focus so much on what it'll be like we often aren't equipped or prepared when it happens. We forget about the issues and, and the baggage and the situations, as my dad would say, that accompany the person or people that we're in relationship with and, and our own baggage and, 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 and issues and situations. Uh, it can be overwhelming, family. Some people may want to do or give too much too soon. Some may expect or require too much of you too soon. In either case, one may just shut down in frustration. I just wanted to, to love someone and, and be loved. I, I wasn't expecting all of this. But family, we must remember that there is great responsibility in love. And the journey to love is not always an easy one. You have to fight for real love. You, you have to die to self for love. Love, real love is not for the selfish family. And we are all selfish by nature. We learn to mature as we experience the 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 responsibility of love and the things that go with it. And we have to learn to be mature because love requires maturity. The truth of the matter is we really didn't find love. Love created us, chased us, protected us. When, when we were lost, when we chose other things that took us further away from the will of God, but not from the heart of God. Love met us where we were. Love just had to expose the situations and circumstances that blocked our view and access to the road back to him. Because if you haven't accepted and experienced God's love, you are ill-equipped. Let me say that again. If you have not accepted and experienced God's love, you are ill-equipped to love 
others, to truly love others in any form, no matter if it's agape, sorge, philia, or eros, the way that God intended for us to love one another. But now that we have God's love, what are we going to do with it? Family, we are going to learn from our mistakes. The same mistakes that Paul pointed out regarding the Corinthians in chapter 12, we will acknowledge the lack of love or the, in the utilization of our spiritual gifts. Those same gifts God gave us to build and love and to minister to the needs of the body of Christ. But we have to start with ourselves. I would say probably about 10 years ago, the Lord impressed me to do a life application, if you will, of the love chapter. Wherever the love was, um, he told me to insert my name there. I'll be honest, it was, it was kind of tough because I failed more times at being love in action than I have been victorious. But with every time I failed, God has blessed me to get back up. He blessed me with more opportunities to show love and to be love in action. He blessed me with the opportunities to, to learn how to love his way through his word and his will and his examples. I don't, we don't want to be just hearers of the word, family. We want to be doers of the word. So if you will, I pray that you will do like the Lord instructed me and to be a living example uh, a, and, and to even do this life application of the love chapter with yourself. If I speak the with tongues of men and angels, but don't have love. I'm just making noise. I've become a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Family, what good is it to be able to explain the sanctuary message? What good is it to be able to, to, ex to explore and, ex and explain the scriptures if you don't have love? What good is the spirit of prophecy if it is not wrapped in love? And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor and I surrender my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Lisa is patient. Lisa is kind and is not jealous. Lisa does not brag and is not arrogant does not act becomingly does not seek her own is not provoked. She does not take into account a wrong suffered. That's a tough one. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. She bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Lisa never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect love comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child. I think like a child, reason like a child. But when I became a woman of God, I did away with childish things. For now, now I see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I have been fully known. But now faith, hope, love abide these three, 
but the greatest of these is love. Now that we have love, what are we going to do with it? No matter if it's agape, storge, philia, eros, like 1 John says in chapter 3, verses 18, let us not love in word and speech, but in action and in truth. Family, so many, so many of life's challenges would simply not exist if we just truly loved and treated others the same way we'd want to be treated. If we just followed God's example in love, we would not have the issues that we have. Love is an action word. If someone tells you that they love you, their actions should confirm it. Jesus said that love would be an identifier of his followers. In John chapter 13, verse 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Family, that is the clearest identifier of being a disciple of Christ. Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Mercy. So if you truly want to be a disciple of Christ, I invite you to either dedicate for the very first time or rededicate yourself. I really want to be a follower of Christ, don't you? And not just the way that's comfortable for me. Because to truly be a follower of Christ, you're going to be uncomfortable, family. It's going to challenge you in ways that you were not quite ready to be challenged. But God will prepare you. God will be with you, and he never asked you to go through this alone. He is there with us. He has promised to never leave nor forsake us. That's love. That is love. So I invite you to accept him, to rededicate yourself, to reclaim your position in the kingdom as a disciple of Christ because they will know that we belong to him if we love one another. Think that? If we truly, truly love one another. So choose love. Choose Jesus and you automatically choose life. You automatically choose salvation. And that's a wonderful choice to make. Because I'm telling you, you know, the, the Winans have this song tomorrow. And as I encourage you week after week to choose Jesus today because tomorrow might be too late. In the song tomorrow, I love how it just convicts you. And it says at the end, your tomorrow might very well begin today. So today, choose him. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for this message. We thank you for dwelling in our midst today. We pray that every soul has been touched. We pray that each, each one of us may take to heart the word that came forth today. We pray that those seeking an answer will receive it and that those who need a special touch will be granted that touch. We pray that you will bless us and keep us safe, Lord, throughout the week until we are able to gather together again, Lord. We pray that you will bless 
the sick and the afflicted all over the world. Continue to bless our first responders, Lord, our military, our police officers, our firemen, our medical staff, Lord, our, our brothers and sisters that are on the front line in the grocery stores that, that are there, Lord, to, to, to take care of us, Lord, when we come and buy our supplies and our food, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those who were deemed non-essential, Lord, that they were so essential, and we thank you, Lord, for keeping them and their families, Lord. Bless us. Keep us, Lord. Don't let us rest, Lord, until we have accepted you as our Lord and Savior. Don't let us rest until we truly learn how to love, Lord, the way that you've appointed and anointed us to love one another. Lord, we truly want to be your disciples, Lord. And Lord, even the songwriter says, Lord, they will know what we are Christians by our love. Help us to truly be love in action, Lord, and help us to truly be witnesses for you. Help us to love, truly love without measure or boundary. But Lord, we're going to need you to teach us. We thank you in advance, Lord, for teaching us. We thank you for leading by example. We thank you for the ultimate act of love, Lord, being our sacrifice. We thank you, praise you, bless you. These and all things we humbly ask, believe, and claim in the worthy name of Jesus, and it is so. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. We pray, family, that you were blessed by today's message. And we ask that you will please connect with us um, on any of our social media platforms. Call us, and text us, leave a message. Um, comment in the comment section below. Connect with us, whatever means that you feel more comfortable. But please, let us know how we can better serve you, how we can pray for you, how we can connect with you. We want to be your family. We want you to be our brother, our sister, our friend. And so now, as we prepare to come to a close, we ask that you will repeat the benediction with us. And it is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you with the love of the Lord and look forward to getting together with you again. Same time, same place next week. Until then, be blessed.